Acts chapter 14, starting at verse 8. It's the first book after the Gospels. And I'm going to read a little bit from chapter 13 and then meet you at chapter 14, verse 8. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. In Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the sacrifice, to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news, that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to follow their own ways, yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. Though it's not a very popular reading, there is so much in these stories. The power of God to bring us to our feet when we feel like we can't move. The way that we get confused and try to make so many temporary things into God's and worship them instead of the truth. Or the way that the beauty and love of God is always for all people but I only get one sermon, so here's what I want to focus on today. Barnabas and Saul, Paul's calling and their gifts. What I appreciate most about this text is what it shows me about how God works in us and through us. These stories from the early church are incredible because for the first time, people are trying to figure out how to live like Jesus without him around. He was such an amazing teacher and witness to the truth, calling people to wake up to their lives and to live from a place of kindness and generosity. And now we get to see how that message and work continued. And the amazing thing is that it kept going. That's what we mean by resurrection, right? People still found healing and wholeness. People still found inspiration and purpose. People still responded to love and beauty. And while no one replaced Jesus as the central figure of this teaching, they literally became the hands and feet of Christ once his were gone. That's what we mean by the body of Christ. I was just talking to the fifth and sixth graders about this about a week and a half ago. Our hands and feet become the ones to do God's work in the world. Our hearts and our lives and our words witness to the truth that we know. And just like the early church, we too are each given unique gifts, irreplaceable ways to be hope spreaders and truth tellers in the world. We are all made to be different, but you are exactly what God had in mind. You, right now, just as you are, are absolutely exactly what God wanted. All those rough bits around the edges that you maybe try to hide, the parts you ignore or wish away, 
the pieces you're worried of being a little too proud of, the aspects that you wish more people would compliment you on. God says, yes, that's awesome to all of them. And it would be easy for me to spend the rest of the sermon trying to convince you that this is true or tell you why it's awesome and you're awesome. But instead, I want us to practice this. Because it's not just an abstract thing. And it's not just something that happened thousands of years ago, kind of in that first generation after Jesus. Because you are gifted and you matter. And so we're going to do it right now. Because God has no other way of healing the world except for through you and your gifts. And we can take a couple minutes right now, sitting right here in these pews, and we can do that healing. So we're going to do a practice, um, a prayer and breathing exercise called Tonglin. It's a Tibetan word that means giving and receiving. And it's a practice that comes from Tibetan Buddhism. So here's how it goes. This is a practice of giving and receiving, using our breath to transform ourselves and our world. So there are two ways to do this. The first, you can either breathe in the pain and hurt of the world, and then through your breath and your love and your energy and God working in and through you, transform that pain into peace and ease. I kind of like to think about it like a compost for difficulty, taking all the scraps and the unwanted pieces and turning it into something beautiful that can bloom and flower anew. You breathe in with the wish to remove the suffering, and then you send out safety and comfort. You send out strength for the people suffering so that they might be able to bear it. You can either do this for a specific thing, like for people in the earthquake in Nepal, people undergoing chemotherapy, people who have recently lost a loved one, whatever suffering your neighbors are experiencing, even the people in this room. Or you can do it in a more general and abstract way, breathing in as fully as you can, and you can decide kind of how big your compost container is there. Breathing in as fully in you, as you can and breathing out as widely as you can, sending that peace out abundantly without overextending yourself. So that's one option. The other option is the exact same but opposite, because you might be the one that needs that healing. You might be the one that can be liberated. So you can breathe out your pain and hurt, releasing what you need to let go of. And then as you inhale, you can fill yourself with refreshing newness, letting the space of your freedom be filled with new peace and ease. And again, you can be specific of what you're letting go of, thinking of a particular pain or grief in your life, or you can do it more generally. And you can be abundant with your release. There are people who are transforming that suffering so you can let go of everything that you can. And then as you breathe in, you can be almost greedy with the peace. There is so much to go around that you can take in whatever you can hold. Let yourself be really filled by this. So those are the two options. And I just want you just to take like a second to think, am I one that can be receiving, that can be doing that composting? Or am I one that wants to be giving some of that away, releasing some of my stuff? And there's no judgment either way. There is no sense of should, right? Remember, we are the body of Christ. And so sometimes, like in the story, we are the man who is feeling crippled like we can't move. And sometimes we are the ones that can do that healing. So choose your practice. Sort of think, am I going to take in some pain or let go of some pain? Am I going to take in some peace or radiate some peace? And then close your eyes, get comfy in your pew, think about how you're sitting. There's no right way to sit, but just be in your body for a minute. And just take two breaths, just two easy breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And now we begin our practice, inhaling what you are taking in and exhaling 
what you are putting back out into the world. Inhaling either peace for yourself or the pain of the world. And exhaling your pain or radiating peace. Inhale, exhale. Visualize what you are taking in. Visualize what you are releasing. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, being clear about what you are taking into yourself. And exhale, imagining whatever you're releasing rampant in the world now. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Last breath, inhaling whatever you are transforming. And exhale, being transformed. So come back, allow your breath to return to its unregulated flow. And just take a moment here to notice how you're feeling. How does your body feel? Does your body or your mind or your heart feel different than it did moments ago? How have you changed through this practice? P.S. One of the reasons I wanted to introduce you to this practice, if you hadn't done it before, is that it's awesome to practice any time. At your desk, at work, sitting in traffic, washing dishes, any time. It's another way for us to connect to God. So I think you can call it prayer. And it's just a cool way to really, really be involved in the transformation of the world. Because this matters. And you matter. Your healing matters to God. And your gifts of compassion and care matter to God. God wants you to be healed and God wants you to be healers. We are all called to use our gifts and make a difference in the world. God has no hands and feet but yours. Once Jesus was gone, we see that God used Saul and Barnabas, and now we are the ones who carry on the movement. You are the means of God in the world. I know we keep saying that, and we've heard it so many times, but you are the way that God loves the world. How else could it happen? What other ways does God have of working in the world if not through people like you and I? You think it's just everyone else? Maybe everyone but you that God could use? What if everybody thought that? No, I mean you. Yes, you. So much so that I'm going to have you repeat after me. So repeat after me. God uses me and my gifts to heal the world. Once more with feeling. God uses me and my gifts to the heal the world. Okay, not like you're Lutherans, but like you actually mean it. God uses me and my gifts to heal the world. And while this can sound like a tall order, just remember that God wants nothing more than for you to be yourself in the world. You're exactly what God had in mind. You have gifts. You matter. And as we saw with Paul and Barnabas and thousands of years ago, the same is still true today. God uses you and your gifts to heal the world. It's that simple. Amen.